I'm glad to be here tonight. Good to be back since we were gone all day on Sunday. But the Lord blessed and we preached and He blessed and we preached again. And if we'd have had another place, we'd have preached a third time. 1988, do y'all remember that year? Do we have anyone in here that was born after 1988? All right. In 1988, there was a man by the name of Bobby McFerrin. He wrote a song, and when I say the first word, you're going to know. I see already some heads doing this. Don't worry. Be happy. Well, let me just let me just read to you how the world looks at things like this. Here are some of the words to that song. It says, here is a little song I wrote. You might want to sing it note for note. Don't worry. Be happy. In every life we have some trouble. But when you worry, you make it double. Don't worry, be happy. Verse 2, ain't got no place to lay your head. Somebody came and took your bed. Don't worry, be happy. The landlord may, beg your pardon, the landlord say your rent is late. He may have to litigate, but don't worry, be happy. Well, that's a song. It was a good song. I remember that. I was just still a young man. But that's how the world looks at it. Just don't worry, be happy. But God gives us help in problems of worrying in Psalm 37. If you will turn there, please, Psalm 37, if you have your Bible. If you don't, Brother T.J. and I have worked it out to where he will put it on the screen. I hesitate to put Scripture on the screen. I'm going to go ahead and say it. Because what it does, it gets folk out of the, shall I say, habit of bringing the Word of God to the house of God. I'm a firm believer in that. I guess I can say that since I'm up here. I think people, I think our neighbors are to see us leaving our house with our Bible in our hand, going to church. A witness, a testimony. <clears throat> Excuse me. Psalm 37 was written by David when David was an old man. Verse 25 tells us that, and we'll read that a little later on. But in this Psalm 37, David addresses a problem that has plagued man for centuries, probably since the beginning of time. And that problem is, why do the wicked seem to prosper, and the godly seem not to prosper. Have you ever been there? Have you ever questioned, why? I know that person, they're just as evil as they can be, but yet they prosper. Whether we will admit it or not, and I'll, for you all and for me, I will raise my hand. I have been there. And I have done that. Why? And sometimes if we're not careful, what we do, in essence, we question God. Why does that person, why are they so prosperous and they are, their life is so wicked? But in verse 1 and 2 of this Psalm 37, God addresses, as a matter of fact, he condemns 
envy. Especially for the lost person. The wicked of this world. It's sometimes it just seems like that the wicked just prospers so well. And, but the thing about it is, their life here on this earth is as close to heaven as they're going to be unless they come to know Jesus Christ. Our life here on earth as children of God is as close to hell as we are going to be. So the very two, first two words of verse 1 Psalmist David says, and certainly under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, he says, fret not. Fret not because of evildoers. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Fret not. I want you to look at those two words, if you will. That word fret there means to, to worry to the point to where you are angry. It is a, where you worry to the point that you have become furious. You worry to the point till your very life begins to erode. You worry to the point that it affects your great life, your, your, your life around you. It, it affects your family. The psalmist David says, don't do that. Don't fret over these things. Don't worry about what's going on in Washington, D.C. One of the probably the most evil places on the planet Earth. I'm not talking donkey or, or, or uh, elephant, either one. I'm saying that you can see it coming from Washington, D.C. And we fret over that. I, I, I recently fretted, and my wife, I, I know she'll say amen probably, but I recently fretted last, about the end of last year when I read in the paper that this, in 2019, we would get a letter as to how they have re-evaluated our, our property for tax purposes. Well, I knew right then and there that I was going to be re-evaluated, and I knew it was going to go up like that just so they could get more taxes. And I fretted over that for several days. I finally got my letter, and I'm still fretting. <laughs> I'm not fretting to the point to where I'm angry. I just fret when they want my money. God says, don't fret. Now let's get down to serious business. He says, fret not over the evildoers. Because he goes, and he goes ahead and tells us what's going to happen to the evildoers. He says, they shall soon be cut down. And they shall soon wither. Now the, word, now the word soon, you say, well, when is soon? Well, God doesn't look at soon like we look at soon. Soon for God, for God could be in the next moment. But either way, he tells what will happen to the wicked. Now here, and, and he gives us a, shall I say a recipe of how to not worry, <clears throat> excuse me, and be happy and I'm not talking about the, the song I just told you about, but how to be, not worry and be happy in our Christian lives so we can live a more victorious life. He says, don't fret. And then after that, he says, here is how you don't fret. He says, trust, verse 3, trust in the Lord and do good, so shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. 
crushed. It is our total reliance on God. When we are totally relying on God Almighty, we don't have time to fret over the wickedness of this world. As a matter of a fact, if we were trusting more and relying more on God, then we would have more time to be praying for the wicked that they would come to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. That word trust means to have all the confidence in the world that we can be sure in the Lord Jesus Christ. As a matter of a fact, that word trust, if you take it to the core, it, it means to hasten to for refuge. In other words, hasten to God, trust Him, and stop fretting over this world and over the evildoers of this world. Hasten. The word trust means to hasten to Him. Trust Him. Uh, in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, the Bible says, without faith or without trust, it is impossible to please God. Our lives cannot please God unless we have all of our faith and trust in Him. So he says, trust in the Lord. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Trust in the Lord and do good. You notice those two aren't turned around because we, there's no way we can do good until we learn to trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord and, and do good service. Be, uh, be benevolent. Be obedient to the Lord. Be everything that we should be for Him. Do good, He says. Be totally reliant on Him and do good. Don't fret. This world is, is, is just so turned upside down with evil. But we should not have our eyes on the world. We should have our eyes on, on the Lord Jesus Christ and God Almighty, our Heavenly Father, and trust Him. The promise is, do good. Notice what, he say, what His promise is. Trust in the Lord. If we trust in the Lord more, we're going to be fretting less. And do good, so shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Of course, he's talking to the children of Israel. I understand that. But in the, in the land in which we live, our Christian lives every day, he promises us that he will, we will dwell in peace if we are trusting in the Lord. Fret not. Trust in the Lord. Fret not, he says. Delight, verse 4. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Delight in the Lord. What does that word delight there mean? It means when life goes bad for you, you, you still are delighting. That actually, that word delight there has a... Has a uh, in feminine meaning, it means a person who can, who can get along with anyone because they have centered their hearts and their minds on the Lord. Delight in Him. Focus on Him. If we are delighting in, in anything or anyone, our focus is on that. So the psalmist David says, delight in Him. Focus on the beauty of the holy God of heaven. Focus on his marvelous grace. Focus on his love. Focus on his daily guidance by his, the Holy Spirit. Focus on his bounty. Focus on being benevolent. Focus on these things. Delight. In other words, our lives every day should be a life that just pours out to God because we just delight in being in his very presence. 
Focus on him. Focus on his power to direct our lives. Focus on his, on his goodness. Focus on his faithfulness. All of these things we can do if we delight in him. Because all of these things will become more enlightened in our lives and, and we will have more light on, on the love of God. We will have more light on the grace of God. We will have more light on the mercy of God. We will have more light on the word of God. If we are delighting ourselves, notice what he says, delight thyself. In other words, turn your total self over to God. If we would do that, dear ones, we'll have a whole lot less time to fret over the wickedness of, of this world or to, or to envy the wickedness of this world. Delight thyself in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. The Bible says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. In Christ, delight ourselves. He will give us the desires of our heart. You say, you mean I can pray for anything? Yes, you can. But first of all, you need to be delighting yourself in him. You see, when we are delighting ourselves in him, the desires of our heart are not on worldly things. That's why God will, will make that promise to us that he will give us the desires of our heart because our, the desires of our heart change when we are delighting in him. When our life is lived every day to, to delight in him and to, to, uh, um, uh, uh, that we would live for him and serve him in a way that we should. You see, when we are delighting in him, our cravings are different. Our cravings are not worldly. Our cravings are spiritual. We, if, if we are delighting in him, delighting ourselves in him, then, then we have that desire to know him. There's a difference in, yes, I know the God of heaven, and I know Jesus Christ, and really, really, really knowing him. Here is how we know him. If we delight in him, then we will have a desire to know him. And we will have a desire to love him. And we will have a desire to live to God. We must delight in him to please him and to please be pleased in him. Fret not. Don't fret. I hope we can go away from here tonight and say, I'm not going to fret because I'm going to trust in the Lord and I'm going to delight myself in him. And then the psalmist says in verse 5, herein comes a problem also with most of us. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. Commit thy way to the Lord. This word commit means to, the Hebrew word there means to roll thy way. Roll it over on him. It's kind of like, it's, a, it's somewhat of a metaphor of a, of a camel. How a camel will lay down and once you've rolled the load on him, then he will get up and get ready to move. The Word of God tells us to roll, roll our load over on the Lord. Roll our way upon the Lord. We say sometimes, oh boy, this way gets heavy. Boy, this is, Satan is just battling me every day and every minute of every day. We need to learn not to fret so much and go by the Word of God and trust Him, delight in Him, and commit ourselves or our way unto the Lord. Now in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6, speaking of the way, humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Now that word casting, I want you to see that word, or hear that word casting there. That word casting means to, 
to hurl. If we would hurl more of our fretting or if we would hurl more of our burden upon the Lord, we would have a whole lot less to carry and we would be more apt to trust in God, delight in Him, and commit our total selves to Him. Hurl. Hurl your cares. Your, the word year means it's a personal care. God says that we need to hurl our personal burdens over on him. Hurl upon him. Don't carry it. Don't let fretting uh, uh, um, bring your life down to a point to where you're not, you don't have any victory in Jesus Christ. Hurl your burdens. Hurl your cares upon the Lord. For he careth for you. I want you to notice there in that one particular word, the Lord. The meaning a particular Lord. If we cast all of our cares upon the Lord, a particular Lord, not just any Lord, but the Lord God of heaven, casting all of our cares upon him, we need to commit ourselves. And then he says, I will bring it to pass. I will bring your way into my way. Because your way, when he speaks of way there, he's speaking of the whole course of our life. It includes all of, of the, our, our daily living. But I will bring it to pass. He's speaking of us being fully satisfied. How long has it been since... You yourself or me, this preacher, could say, I'm fully satisfied in my salvation. Dear ones, until we learn to trust in Him, until we learn to delight in Him and commit our way to Him, we will not have the full satisfaction that He would have us to have. God wants us to be in His total will. And he wants to give us those things that, we, that he wants us to have. But if we're not committing ourselves to him, then God does not owe us any promise whatsoever. That that you have committed. In verse 6, the Bible says, And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Thy righteousness to light. How does he bring our righteousness to light? How, do we, how does our righteousness to, to light here on this earth? In our testimony. It's a part of having our Bible under our arm or in our hand when we leave. Our house on Sunday morning or Wednesday night either way. He will bring our righteousness if we are committed to him. And if we are delighting in him. And if we are trusting in him then we are less apt to fret over this world. I want to read something here in Revelation chapter 3, verse 21. <clears throat> Excuse me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne. Now that ought to light you up a little bit. To him that overcometh. You say, when I preach, how do we overcome? Well, in Jesus Christ, we are overcomers. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame, Jesus said, and am set down with my Father in his throne. Boy, if we could just, if we could just learn to trust in him and delight in him and commit our ways to him. He says, you will, you will sit with me on the, uh, at the throne of my Father. What a blessed promise that is, dear one, for us. What a, what a, 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 a signal, a, a green light to go forward in the victory of Jesus Christ. He says, don't fret, but I want you to trust. I want you to delight in the Lord. I want you to commit your way to the Lord. And then he says, rest. The rest that he's speaking here of, obviously, is spiritual rest. We can't have that, that full understanding of rest until we have done the other things, until we have trusted and, and delighted and committed. 
because he puts it in a good order here. It's a, it's a progressive order. We are progressing towards a rest. That, that hope that we have, that peace that we have, that we uh, can rest in him. He says, rest in the Lord. Rest in the Lord. That word rest there has the meaning of be silent. It has the meaning of Be still. Shh. Rest. Peace. Trust. Delight. Commit. And then just rest in the Lord. Rest in the Lord. Jesus says, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart and you shall find rest for your soul. Rest for your soul. But it takes commitment to have that rest that he's talking about here. It takes commitment. And you say, preacher, you've said it three times. I'm going to say it the fourth time. It takes trust. And it takes delight in the Lord. And it takes committing our way to the Lord. And it takes total commitment and consecration if we want to achieve that rest that he's talking about. Rest. Rest in him. It's kind of like a holy tranquilizer that God gives. He gives a rest. For we who do believe in him, Paul says, we enter into rest. rest. Then he goes on and says, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. We are waiting. We are waiting for the day when he, when he comes in the clouds to receive us unto himself. That where he is, we may be also. We wait patiently. But you see, if we're fretting, if we're fretting over this world, if we're fretting over, I, 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 when we heard it this week, and I certainly, hey, I'm a firm 100% believer in, in supporting and praying for Israel. That's God's people, and they, therefore they become my people, and I pray for them. But I don't get excited, real excited. I don't fret over when, 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 the, when the rockets are coming from Gaza over into Israel and Israel shoots a few rockets over the other way. You know what that tells me? It's just like, just like the pitcher being in the bullpen before the game starts. That's exactly what's happening. They're warming up, and, and they don't know it, but God knows it. They're warming up for the final war, dear ones. And it's all going to happen right in there. I don't fret over that because that is, that is that glorious day that we look forward to. He says, wait patiently. Wait patiently. And your patience, Jesus says, possess ye your soul. Patience. In Galatians chapter 6, verse 9, Paul says, Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season... If we faint, we shall reap. If we faint not. Well, how do I keep from fainting, preacher? The world's going awful fast and everything's just zooming by me and, and all of this. Trust. Delight. Commit. If we will do that 100%, dear ones, then, then you can rest assured that, that you, will, you will not faint in the presence of the pressures of this world. Don't faint, he says. Don't be weary in well-doing. Just keep on trucking. And he says, I'll give you rest. Wait patiently. Trust. Delight. Commit. Rest. And wait. Now those, that's the, that's the core of the message. And I'm going to end with these verses. 
It will be on the screen if you'd like to follow me. Verse 23 through verse 26. Notice what he says. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. That tells me that there are going to be times when we're going to slip and fall. But we will not be totally cast down. God won't forget us. You can rest assured of that. For the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. Have you, have you ever been? <laughs> I've been down there. Have you ever been down there when, when you needed the Lord just to reach over and, and, and help you up? And he goes on and says, though, though he fall, I'll read it again, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. And the psalmist says, I have been young, and now am old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. So why fret? Why fret? We are the children of God. We don't need to fret over what's going on in this world. We just need to commit ourselves, and we need to delight in him, and we need to trust in him in order to have that rest that we, that we desire to have. What a wonderful, wonderful passage of Scripture. Let me read verse 26. He is ever merciful and lendeth, and his seed is blessed. You say, well, he's talking about the seed of Israel. Yes, he is. But what are we? We're of the seed of, of Abraham. Say amen right there. Don't be afraid. Because how do you, that's how Jesus got here, you know. And if we, are, if we are in the blood of Jesus Christ, we're the seed of Abraham. And he says in verse 26, he says, uh, uh, um, uh, and his seed is blessed. We are blessed, blessed, blessed because our hope is in Jesus Christ that one day he is coming to get his children. Don't fret over this world. Just just trust him and delight in him and commit yourself to him and go through life in a restful state waiting patiently on his return. May God bless you. I hope you have been encouraged tonight. Let us pray. <clears throat>